Hey everyone, welcome back to Music Meditation Medicine. Can you can you hear me okay, I hope? We are in the studio. I'm very happy to have my friend James Waterman here in Raga Jazz Studio with us. Hey there, thanks Paul. Yeah man, uh, he's gonna be playing percussion tonight and we'll be doing some improvisations together and talking about uh, the music we do. So thanks for being here. I'm going to open the show tonight with a piece I recorded this year in India, <clears throat> in Kolkata. And I'll tell you more about this in a minute. Here we go. All right, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the, the, what this is. This is a piece I'm gonna be releasing this uh, this winter and just finishing some mixes with Bryce Lamar here in this studio. Um, this is Natalie Ramirez on Bansuri flute. She was one of my students in Mexico many years ago and uh, Ended up moving to India and getting very deep into Indian music, marrying an Indian cat, and uh, moving to Delhi. So she's back and forth from Delhi and Halapa every year. This is her on flute. We did a bunch of gigs in India together this year. On drums is an amazing young drummer who's not even 20 years old, uh, I think. Arjun Chakravarti, one of the leading jazz drummers in India right now, playing all kind of gigs all over. Um, really amazing ears this guy has at a really young age and uh, super groovy playing. Arjun Chakravarti. I played bass and sitar on this. And we recorded it in a studio in Kolkata called the Imaginarium. Imaginarium, like an aquarium for your imagination. So I did a, did a couple, at least one album, maybe two albums worth of stuff there this year on my fellowship trip. Kind of loosely based on Ragashri. Rag Ragashri.
All right. Um, if you've just joined us, welcome to Music Meditation Medicine, the first Monday of every month. Next show the, is going to be the last one of the year. It's going to be actually on Monday, November 28th with Masuko Chippenberry from Malawi. And so it's not going to be on the first Monday. It's going to be in the last Monday of this month because <clears throat> he's visiting from Costa Rica and won't be here. And I wanted to get him in. So that'll be on the 28th. Uh, and then we're doing some concerts with him that week for the Pasadena UN. But anyway, let's get to what's happening now, which is uh, James Waterman. That cat back there behind the drums, he's brought all kind of cool percussion and stuff. And uh, we're going to do some improvisations right now. And I uh, hope you enjoy that. I'm just going to switch up the microphones here. All right. Can you say hello, James? Is this the, see if that's working? Yeah. Check, check. Hey there. All right. Let's see if it's working. Cool. Thanks for being here, James. Thank you, Paul. I'm going to come back there and join you now. <clears throat> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
All right. Yeah, man. We got James Waterman on percussion right here. There. Thanks for joining us. Music, meditation, medicine tonight. Mm. Um. Wow, that was super fun. I like this, you know, having the mics over here and kind of walk around and do the show <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> All right. As long as I don't step on my headphone cables. So, man, let's... Do you mind if we just talk about this process a little bit? Because yeah. I think it could be interesting. Tell them. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to move this over just so you can hear you a little better. So, what do you think about or not think about or how do you prepare or not prepare <laughs> when you're going to play just purely improvised music like this now obviously none of this well maybe it's not obvious but none of this was premeditated nor post meditated well maybe we are post meditating it <clears throat> uh, <laughs> yeah for sure but um yeah what do you think about improvised music what's different about improvised music for you than say i know you're a composer also than playing uh you know written music where maybe you uh play parts you know with with other musicians and then you know improvise in some areas you yeah. know but th th as far as like free music like this what you, you have anything to want to express about that yeah well when Especially as a drummer, when you're playing pre-composed music, one as as the drummer, you you really um, you gotta know the tune really well, right? So in some ways, you're playing on autopilot um, to a certain extent, you know, because you're kind of you're in some ways when you're playing a drummer in a band or a jazz group, you're kind of kicking in and you're the conductor in some ways, mm -hmm. driving in everybody else. Um, in this kind of setting, it's like um, not to say that. Li you know, I'm not listening all the time, but it's definitely more about responding and listening. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely doing a lot more thinking about where I shouldn't play than where I should be playing, right? In this context. In this context. In a free free music for context. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And to me, I feel like that's always, and or many times, kind of brought out some of the most enjoyable and meaningful improvisations when I'm thinking a lot less about oh, where should I, where do I fit in with this? And mm -hmm. more like listening and where should I be sitting out and not trying to always fill the space at all, at all times. Cool. Well, yeah, one of the things I like to explore in the show and I've done with people like Pedro and Stash is talk about, um, you know, what's kind of happening in the brain mm. as a musician. And I think that's a really fascinating subject because, um, from the little bit of research I've done, uh, and I'm not obviously not a neuroscience person, but I've read a lot about about this subject and <clears throat> and very fascinated with how uh, the brain functions in a creative context. Because yeah. I actually believe that all people are artists, whether they're so-called artists or not, because we all do things spontaneously. Absolutely. Um, so <clears throat> one of my one of my favorite quotes that I always like to share and just put it in the text if you're bored of hearing this one but I, thought, I think i've shared it on one of the shows before is one of my heroes is uh martin king martin luther king and he used to say if you're a street street sweeper sweep streets like michelangelo painted the 16 chapel mm. so that all of heaven and earth when you go will say here lied a great st street sweeper yeah so we can all do things with a creative and passionate yeah flow you know no matter what we do and that's why i think everyone's an artist one of the podcasts i did for the soul Forth podcast was talking about martin luther king himself as an artist mm -hmm. he was an artist of the word you know yeah and uh and of, of of the conscience absolutely you know so uh yeah so that's a fascinating thing and i think that when we're like you know doing this Musicians have to do this sometimes, you know, we got these these things in front of us with these yeah. dots and lines and everything. And we have to be like, da, 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 and get things like exactly how the composer wrote them. 
And that's a actually really different brain process for sure than doing something like we're doing here. Yep. Because first of all, you're using the visual cortex of your brain. Mm -hmm. And we weren't using the visual cortex at all here. In fact, I had my eyes closed a lot of the time. Right. I mean, except sometimes maybe when I'm watching you a little yeah. bit, but it's it's definitely a lot less engaged than when you know, you're like in the LA Philharmonic and you're playing Mahler and you're trying to play these ridiculously yeah. complicated things, you know. Yeah. Um <clears throat> or you know, well, it's more like having a conversation and less like you're reading dialogue, right? That's kind of yeah. the difference is, you know, I, uh, I teach a lot, a lot of mm. students and I'm trying to get in, jumping into improvisation. First of all, I like to jump into improvisation early, you know, as early mm. as I can awesome. uh, with my students as opposed to waiting until they've learned, you know, a bunch of scales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of times um, students are, are, um, are feeling tentative. I say, well, let me you improvise every single day and and when you wake up do you go and read a, uh you know your journal of all of the sentences you're going to speak to everybody that day right yeah, and try yeah. to memorize everything you're going to say to everybody no of course not you go out yeah. and you're improvising when you speak to people exactly and you're not you're not necessarily you're not speaking gibberish to them you're speaking in a language you understand right um, and that they understand. Mm. So I feel like have, improvising with, with somebody is having a conversation with them, right? Mm. You're, not, you're not waiting to read your line. You're waiting to, to find a natural flow in the conversation where you can add something meaningful, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's really cool. And I think drums are such a wonderful way to start playing music, you mm. know, with, with kids because you don't have to deal with the, the complexity of like notes like people start <laughs> right. you know people start uh kids on violin or something and there's all these rules they have to you know you have to deal with and you know you have to hold it a certain way and use the bow and play in tune and get a good sound and all and all this stuff and what i love about starting kids with percussion and drums is you just play yeah there's a good there's an easy access point, yeah there's, right? there's there's a you know obviously there are master drummers and and and, yeah. and and there's 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 a place and a time for getting into really fine techniques and, and all right. kind of stuff but um the the like you said the ex 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 accessibility point yeah. is like pretty uh pretty quick yeah you know to sound basically the way that the kid or the student wants it to there in their in their head right yeah there's only a few different ways to hit the symbol where it won't sound the way you want it to, right? But otherwise, yeah. if I hit that symbol, if I hit it, if you know, I uh, you know, the world's greatest drum set player hits it, uh, or if a, a kid hits it, right? It's pretty much always going to sound like that, right? Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's a it's a nice open access point for someone to get their hands dirty and sound the way that they kind of want to yeah. from the beginning, right? As opposed to like a saxophone, where yeah. just getting that embouchure going yeah. is like. If you're squawking for the first, you know, like four or five years of your of your studies on that instrument, so yeah. And just to reflect a little bit about teaching, because uh, I'm also a, an educator and I love teaching. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most important things uh, with teaching young people, especially kids, is that is is to, is to um, that they find it, make sure it's joyful. You know, that uh -huh. it's like like that it's turning them on, right? Because uh, you know, when you start kids on piano and stuff, and, and there's this old school way of like, like really strict playing and smash your fingers and right. all this stuff. It's like, then, then you got kids going into piano lessons or whatever it is, like all freaked out and like thinking they got to do it right and blah, blah, blah. And, totally. and that, and, and, and so I think a lot of, a lot of people kind of grew up with uh, fear of music. Yes because of that yeah and what a what a terrible thing to have fear of music awful. you know awful like music is our only friend but, <laughs> <laughs> right. it's like <laughs> no, you know there's times when you may feel like oh this music is hard or whatever right. we're playing something hard but man I always love to say uh, you know I'm so happy that I don't work because I just play you know my work is play yeah that's right <laughs> and that's right. uh you know not that we don't work hard as musicians sure. but it's it's 
the work is play. Mm -hmm. And that's such a, um, that aspect of enjoying it is so much better because if we're, if we're, tr if we're trying to perform and there's this constant feeling of like, oh, I gotta, I gotta be this level. And you're thinking about that. Then you can't really be creative because you, you're, you're kind of, uh, under the shadow of measuring up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, it's <clears throat> what, what I've been, some of the books I've been reading lately is, is just that like, we, we need to be completely re relaxed to be creative. Yep. You know, we can't be stressed yeah. and be creative because then our brains go into that fight or flight mode. And that goes into our kind of like lower brain and, and, and brain chemicals like cortisol mm -hmm. get released. And, and, and then it's very hard to enjoy. Right. You need your needs, your basic, like emotional needs to be met. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh. So, yeah. So joyful music making is, is really, uh, yeah. important. I mean, some people may be like, Oh, that's cheesy. No, I think so it's real. serious or but whatever, you know, the best access point to some folks that maybe aren't musicians is that conversation thing. It's like, think about when you're around somebody that you're really comfortable, you're not worrying about yeah. you know who, what this person saying all the right things you can just open up to them and uh and say the things you that you really truly want to express right as opposed to feeling like you're walking on eggshells all the time and that's the same thing with music making if you're worried about about the notes you're playing all the time worrying about making mistakes worrying about how good it is you're not going to be open and express yourself as freely as, as you as otherwise right so yeah and that just comes down yeah that's why i mean i think people even go to concerts because they want to be free. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to have that experience where they're not thinking about, I mean, I, I don't think most people really uh, think about this consciously, but um, we want to kind of get out of ourselves, our mundane, super thinking minds, you know, mm -hmm. where we're worrying about, or like most people are worrying about work or this or that, or, not, you know. Yeah. Maybe it's musicians like, oh, I got to be more successful or I got to get more gigs or blah, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. So we go to concerts and we want to just be in the music and kind of lose ourselves and have that transcendent experience, you know. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that if we're stressed. Yeah. It's like that's just basic, you know, yeah. reality of, of our how our brains work. So mm -hmm. it's a really great thing to to kind of unpack. And I think that the more that music education can kind of embrace that idea of free play is, is, is really cool because then, because we can kind of fall in love with the music first, 100%. you know, and then, okay, I want to be a jazz musician. I want to be a classical musician. I want to do Indian classical music. I want to do, you know, Latin music, African music, whatever we want to get into as a kind of a genre for lack of a better word, a style. Um, then we can find a teacher and go into the discipline and get our ass, asses kicked and yeah. have to go through the yeah. the struggle of it, you know, because also we don't, our brains don't learn without struggle. Mm -hmm. And, and one of the things I'm really into is looking at struggle in a positive framework because uh, it's like learning a language, you know, music, musical languages are like literal languages, mm -hmm. right? We can't do it without, making a lot of mistakes. Oh, yeah. Or like having a bunch of stuff that we don't understand, right? It's a bunch of words that we don't understand. Yeah. A bunch of sentences that we're hearing. And we're like, what does that even mean? Right? Yeah. So we need a guru or a teacher or, 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 or someone to lead us and to say like, okay, you know, in this music, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's just wrong. You can't do it that way. You know, the, it, in musical styles, things are right and wrong, right? You can't, you can't just be like, like sure. we're playing, you can't just do that on playing Indian music or, you know, any, right. you know, like right. you've studied a lot Context of Context is important, right? African music and, you know, you've, tell us a little bit about your studies with African music. That's, that's totally different context, but maybe we can just shift to that a little bit because that, that's, I know you teach that at GCC. Mm -hmm. Both of us teach at GCC, by the way. Um, yeah. And thanks to Paul Sherman, we're developing thanks, a world music program at GCC, which is Glendale Community College. Mm -hmm. And uh, James also teaches at uh, Mount St. Mary's University, Mount St. Mary's University mm -hmm. in the west side of L.A. Mm -hmm. But over here on the east side, we got Glendale Community College 
and we got world music ensembles there. So if you want to know more about that, hit us up. Uh, tell us about learning a little bit about learning African music and how that's, I mean, because I know you're classically trained marimba. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. 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 That's my then, like Western, Western classical yeah, is like the that, training background for sure. Yeah. And then you have African marimbas. Yeah. Or, or kind of marimbas. You know, yeah. That, depending that on you where study. you are, um, they're sometimes colloquially called marimbas, definitely down in South Africa and Zimbabwe. Um, uh, uh, the Zala, kind of the idiophones are yeah. often referred to as, as um, uh, marimbas. Uh, oftentimes you'll hear in West Africa, they're called, called xylophones. Mm -hmm. uh, but the specific xylophone that I've, I've studied a little bit, I'm definitely no master, uh, is the, uh, is the Jill, Jill, the Jill, which is a yeah. Ghanaian uh, yes. xylophone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, sometimes classified as a balaphone. Um, yes. But uh, more specifically, it's a Jill. Um, so is balaphone a, mo a more broader name for in some like ways a type it, of type of yeah it can be used that way but it's <clears> also on um, oftentimes you'll see um balafone uh specifically being used uh by the jolly musicians uh the griots yeah. of uh the um the mande language people um uh, which are um you know so they, that's like that's like guinea uh guinea senegal mali yeah um, okay uh ivory coast those yeah. areas yeah okay yeah uh, but Jill, uh, you know, uh, folks that play that instrument uh, typically call it Jill. Yeah, yeah. And that's a pentatonic xylophone, and it's uh, like a beautiful instrument. And I learned it from master, uh, I learned it from two master uh, Jill players. My first teacher was late, late great uh, uh, Bernard Woma, and then SK Kakraba, who if I, I believe is still still here local in, in Los Angeles. So I yeah. just heard him play two weeks ago. Oh, great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah he's, a, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's great. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. So what could you tell us about learning that music that was really different and challenging for you? Well, a big uh, feature of the, some of the music from West Africa, and by the way, like, you know, it's, it's, you know, even just saying West African music is such a huge, huge broad, yeah. broad umbrella. So, uh, so I specifically have studied quite a lot of music from Ghana uh, and specifically of the group of uh, people called the Ewe people. My teachers are the Led Zekpo family yeah. uh, who, uh, who work over, who um, founded the program over at Cal, Cal Arts, where I studied. Yep, I started with them too. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and that music is really, really interesting. Um, it's probably some of the most complicated um, drumming in that human beings have ever concocted, right? Wow, yeah. um, it's probably some of the most uh, like uh, rhythmically uh, interesting. And it, it's just when we think this idea of polyrhythm, right? And hearing where a pulse is or hearing yeah. where a feel is, hearing the different. Um, it really explores like feelings of like both a three pulse one two three one two three right on top of a one two one two one yeah. two and phrases that can be felt simultaneously in both and then when we talk about cycle like in north indian music right there's like yeah. a sense of cycle and not really having a quote unquote um beginning and end point but really having a sense a flow, of yeah. a flow of going through so really uh, disorienting music for an outsider like myself to, to have studied. But, you know, and just when you think you get it, there's more mu music to learn that, that throws you off, right? Yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I feel that way so much, even after 37 years studying Indian music and going back to India this year for six months on this AISS fellowship, mm. uh, I've always felt like learning that music classical south asian raga music it's like an unfolding experience of bewilderment yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think that's kind of what you're saying with the african music too yeah. it's like it's like you're stepping into something where all the things that you kind of depended on that were you knew were there you know were suddenly taken away and you're like where am I, you know, kind of floating in oh, a space guess. with all these things going on and, and, and you're kind of grasping for, for, for things. And um, it was so cool because th even this trip, you know, over the years I've learned to be okay with that. Yeah. You know, and it's a really wonderful thing to, to, to be able to come into a situation where you really feel like a beginner again, even after yes. so many years, because I was studying a tradition called Drupad, which is one mm -hmm. of the, arguably the oldest living music tradition on the planet. 
and uh, I like to say the longest peaceful collaboration between Muslims and Hindus mm. uh, since the 16th century. So, um, but there's so many aspects of Drupad which uh, go deeper into the, especially the intonation of the raga and way you express the phraseology of the raga, uh, which are, we never learned just playing sitar or learning vocal music in the Khyal tradition, which is the modern classical yeah. tradition. So there were, I just had all these new kind of mind blowing experiences with, with my teachers there, including Ustad Bawad and Dagar, who's the uh, 20th generation in his family of the Dagar lineage mm. uh, in Vina player. Amazing. And old, he was talking, right? he was, I always learned for instance, that like Sa, like the, 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 the tonic, in the Indian music, which you always hear in the Tanpura, uh, that sa um, and pa, we always learned that those are the fixed notes and that you have shrutis or microtones with all the other notes. But he started teaching me that like, there's actually, depending on the raga, there's different saws. Oh my goodness, yeah. So, <laughs> so that was like, oh my God, after all these years, now I gotta like deal with different saws too. Right. Yeah. Like, like, some, like certain ragas you play the you, you kind of touch, you kind of pull the saw down a little bit, ah, you know, when, when you sing it or play it, you play it a little bit on the high side, ah. you know, and then you get the proper rasa, the feeling of the raga, you know? Right just mind-blowing stuff like that where i'm like oh no now i have to like figure this yeah, out too everything. after like almost yeah. 40 years <laughs> like yeah and but but i realized like wow like this is such an endless story you know and 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 i get to be part of it like how cool is that you absolutely know? Um, so i love that yeah same thing with learning by uh, um west african music um and learning you know you'll find different versions of pieces and different variations and different way like you know, there's um, when I w went to Ghana, I learned a whole bunch of repertoire um, with with one bell pattern. The bells are typically the kind of the timekeepers of the ensemble, and also kind of the style setters, right, mm. of the ensemble of, of the ensemble. And then came over and started learning with the Lezepo family and learned completely different versions of ascent, essentially what is the same piece, the same pur purposeful traditional music, and having my whole brain explode. And then you know, realizing that in in this version of this piece, there was certain rhythms that are played that I heard from a different piece from my other teachers and just, you know, and it's all folk music and um, that just transforms from people to people. Mm. And it's just interesting to just kind of stay humble and uh, and stay uh, a learner with it, you know, no matter how much time, uh, you know, I've, I've learned pieces within the West African tradition uh, that I've learned uh, that I was like feeling quote unquote incorrectly for years and then realized when I saw some dancing to go with it, oh, I guess the downbeat was there the whole time. <laughs> right. And that, that's that's the, the fascinating thing about that music is that um is that some sometimes that music can be so ambiguous rhythmically to outsiders. Yeah. Um <clears throat> that it just blows your mind when you start to hear it a different way. You're like, oh my goodness, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty it's pretty trippy. Super cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My friend Pedro Stash, he's one of my best friends and such a phenomenal musician and uh he always likes to say god made me a musician to keep me humble my whole life <laughs> yes right you know and uh he studied so many different traditions as well and i love that i love that quote from him well i love how music uh, capitalizes on different strengths um mm. and there is no absolute um <clears throat> you know, hierarchy of music tradition, right? No music tradition does everything about music the best, right? Yeah. You'll find, you know, in one tradition, there's a, there's a, a such more complex approach to harmony, right? Yeah. Where there's stacked chords and different interesting ways that the voices all align with each other, but, and that won't be present in another music tradition, right? Right. But the rhythm on this music tradition will be blow your mind, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I love it how there's, it's like the great equalizer. Like you can, you can walk in and play, you can have the greatest mu uh, you know, uh, tumble player on the planet, the greatest drum set on the planet, player on the planet, and then put them in out of their element, and all of a sudden they'll feel like a complete beginner, yeah, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, so I love that about that, yeah. right? Um, so, 
Um, yeah. And it's nice when you get to feel like, oh, this is my music. This is this is what's deep in my bones, yeah. right? Um, sometimes I feel that way, you know, even though I've studied so many different traditions. I, I feel like where <laughs> where I can where I know that I'll, nobody can have to worry about, you know, I'm doing all the right things is when I sit down back to my American like rock roots, like you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. It's like you know where yeah. I, you know where I definitely don't need to uh, to think. To, to think <laughs> is when I can just play like a solid like Beatles groove or something. Yeah, because you know? I grew up with that stuff. So yeah, sometimes it's it's also a nice homecoming when you can totally right. So yeah. it's it's cool like that. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, let's play some more. Let's do it. Um, <clears throat> maybe we can do something where we start out with just percussion and then I'll, I'll I think I'll move, move over to sitar. Wonderful. All right. Again, thanks for being here. Music meditation medicine with James Waterman. Thank you, James, for being here. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you.
Thanks for being here. That's James Waterman. My name is Paul Livingbone. <laughs> We're here at Raga Jazz Studios. Thanks for joining us tonight. This is Music Meditation Medicine. Stay musical. All right, see you next time. Thanks, Paul. Thank yeah. you.